uh, comments that I've made about SJR 14 and how I think it'll devastate the economy if that uh, somehow or another gets through. Thank you. Mike Clark. Welcome to the last episode of RMC TV before the primary. We've brought the candidates in for one last shout. I'm Tom Heck. I'm running for U.S. Senate in Nevada. I'm a Republican. I believe in Republican values, principles, our president, and our president's agenda. Um, I'm sure I've talked to many of them a lot of the time and frequently. I just want to cover a few of my issues that uh, I think are important to the voters. Um, I think one of the big issues, we continue to grow government. I believe that we need to start focusing on cutting spending of things that we really don't need. Um, I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. It takes a good guy with a gun to stop a bad guy with a gun. I'm in favor of building the wall, stopping chain migration, um, the visa lottery, and I believe that we should have a merit immigration system. Um, absolutely build the wall. We need to strengthen our military and protect Americans wherever they may be. And absolutely repeal Obamacare. It needs to be turned over to a free market similar to auto insurance. I believe in a flat tax. We have this misconception out there that legislatures and people believe that we should always tax businesses. Everyone, businesses don't pay taxes, only people do. For businesses, it's a pass-through. Whoever uses the product and services pays the taxes. And lastly, we need to continue reducing regulations. I'm Tom Heck. I'm running for U.S. Senate in Nevada. This is your opportunity to vote for a true conservative who will change our way of business. The question to ask yourself is, are you happy the way the current senator is representing to you? And if not, it's a vote for Tom Heck in the June 12 primary. Thank you for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day. Thank you. The next representative is representing Dean Heller, Elliot Malian, and he doesn't have to stand. He's a little bit on the shorter side. Thanks. But do look at the camera. Rude. Do look at the camera. I'm going to talk to the people. I'll do both. Thank you. Uh, Elliot Mallon, I am here, the deputy political director for Senator Heller. So obviously I'm not Senator Heller. He is much, much taller. A little bit older than me. Um, but I like to say I'm a little bit better looking. We'll see if that's true. Um, we are, I'm really happy to be here this morning. I had a little bit of an early morning. So thank you for having me. Uh, I want to start off by saying that we are very honored to have the support of President Trump for our reelection campaign to send Senator uh, Heller back to the United States Senate. Uh, recently, a poll came out that had us up on Jackie Rosen one point. One point. That is not a lot. That is within the margin of error. But who thought a year ago that this is where we would be? We need all of your help to make sure that we keep Dean there, we keep the governor's mansion red, we turn the legislature red, we keep our constitutional offices. This is a team sport. This is about our team. It's not just about uh, sending Dean back. It's about sending the Republicans, all of these wonderful people up here, to the respective offices. School board. We heard a lot about what's going on in the school board. Let's, let's help. Let's get Republicans out. Let's work with the county party and get Republicans elected to make sure we advance our mission across the state. A few things that we're working on right now, uh, we're really proud to have Dean uh, sponsor, write, and pass the uh, tax reform legislation that President Trump signed into law back in December, which is a big deal that is putting more money into your pockets, into the lower income pockets, and helping Nevadans. Uh, President Trump just signed right to try legislation, uh, which gives terminally ill patients a right to try uh, medication procedures that have not been approved by the FDA. Um, this is a big, big deal. It's giving people uh, the ability to make the decisions for themselves and not have the government hampering their life. Dean was a sponsor of that, and it has just been signed into law, I believe, yesterday. Uh, on top of that, we have the VA Accountability Act that was signed into law just about a year ago. Uh, so we are doing a lot. I would ask you to vote. Uh, vote for Dean. The primary is coming up in, I think, 11, 12 days. 12. 12? Thanks, Darren. We had this conversation earlier. In 12 days. It is early voting right now. We need every person to show up and vote. The Democrats have a slight edge in their voter turnout. Not that it matters right now, but we need to show them that we are fired up we are ready to send Dean back to the United States Senate, and we are ready to elect Republicans back into office. So thank you, um, and thank you for having me this morning. Thank you, Elliot. 
The next candidate, Sharon Angle, she's running for Congressional District 2. Sharon? I'm Sharon Angle. I'm running for CD2, and I want your vote. You have an opportunity in Congressional District 2, because this is a Republican district, to elect a constitutional conservative and to vote a change for a difference. I have a website, SharonAngle.com, if you want to know about my background. It is in this book, Right Angle, One Woman's uh, Journey to Reclaim the Constitution. It talks about my fight all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court to defend the state constitution when it was attacked by uh, our officials. Unlike my opponent who says, I'm not a constitutional guy, I am a constitutional woman. I would also like to point out that uh, my opponent, uh, Congressman Amade, has been classified as a small group, part of a small group of liberal Republicans that are helping to push the Democrat agenda of amnesty and undermine President Trump's uh, secure borders policy. And to that, his defense was, I'm not a constitutional guy. I am, as I said, that constitutional woman. My issues are going to be to defend your constitution at the federal level, to help our president push through the freedom agenda that he has already started, which has made America great again already. And to that, the president has said, Sharon, Sharon, she's great. Again, I'm Sharon Angle, running for Congressional District 2, and I want your vote. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. And by the way, each of you get approximately a minute. We're okay on time. Next is a candidate for governor. He doesn't, he can stand by and still see it. Bill Boyd is running for governor. Go ahead, Bill. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming out. It's nice to see you. Yes, Ray is right. My name is William Boyd, and I am running for governor. I'm in favor of reassessing the taxes we already pay rather than adding more taxes. I believe there's a lot of expense happening. People just keep sticking their fingers in the cookie jar and running off with all the cookies, and then they want more cookies. Why don't we just put a padlock on the cookie jar and only let those people in there that really have good ideals and really need the money for the betterment of the people? I'm in favor of chopping fingers off. Also, you know, if you're one person taking one pill per day, that'd be 365 pills per person. If that's my mathematics suit me correctly or is correct on my math there. But So if you have two people, how many pills per day or per year are you giving out? How can we go over on these things? Why do we not have doctors accountable? Someone's got to be accountable for all these pills and these issues that we're having. Once again, fingers. Folks, I'm William Boyd, and I love the Second Amendment, and I'm not going to surrender it to anyone for no reason. If you want anything from me on, my, on that part right there, you're going to have to fight me, and I love to fight. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Thank you, Bill. And the next We're person is Noah Jenny, representing the Adam Laxall campaign. No? Hi, thank you, Ray. Uh, my name is Noah Jennings. I'm the regional field director for Washoe County for Adam Laxalt's campaign. Uh, first of all, if you want any more information than I can provide today, go to adamlaxalt.com. Uh, that's our actual website. Now, Adam has a proven record in the Attorney General's Office of protecting Nevadans, of keeping our state safer, and he plans to continue that as governor of the state. He saved $30 million in his office alone, and if you think that's good, just wait until he has control over all the rest of the executive offices and can save more money there. So, uh, for a safer Nevada future, for a more prosperous Nevada future, we invite you to vote for Adam Laxalt. Uh, we've got a few events coming up for Get Out the Vote on our tour. Uh, we welcome you to come out to any and all of those. And additionally, uh, we ask for your support as we get into this general election cycle. Thank you, Noah. Next candidate is Eugene Hoover, running for lieutenant governor. You're on, Eugene. Good morning. I think I'll go ahead and repeat that. My name's Eugene Hoover, and I'm running for lieutenant governor in the great state of Nevada. I was a longtime small business owner, 
and I've been representing small businesses down at the legislature for about eight years. But I suspect most of the people in this room already know that. And what I would say is this. I'm against the commerce tax. My opponent helped push the commerce tax through. This, this election can't be any simpler than that. You're, if you're against the commerce tax, I ask that you vote for me. If you're for the commerce tax, vote for my opponent. It's just that simple. And if there's anybody in this room who's not already planning on voting for me, I would appreciate talking with you at some time after the meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eugene. I want to let the judge introduce himself. I always have trouble with his last name. Yeah, good morning. I'm Judge Leon Aberstory. Uh, it's a good Irish name. And I'm running for the uh, Nevada Supreme Court seat C. And uh, currently, I'm a district court judge in a rural county. I've been a judge for 10 years. In the rural counties, we handle everything. Uh, it's not uncommon that in the morning, I'll handle a, an adoption or a child custody. Uh, and in the afternoon, I, I, I'm doing a murder evidentiary hearing. We do all of the important things that affect you. I have quite a bit of experience in family law. And most of you will not be before a district court judge for murder charges. You're not going to be before a district court judge to have a $100 million lawsuit. But you will be, have someone in your family, whether it's a grandson, son, maybe yourself in a few years in a guardianship. That's where most Nevadans have their contact. It's with the family courts. And unfortunately, too many Nevadans believe that their family courts are not providing the service that they need. And so in terms of what I propose when I get on the Supreme Court is families come first in Nevada. We'll get the family courts the, the resources that they need, and we'll get them the help that they need to help our families. You know, families are the backbone of any society, and we need to promote our families in Nevada. So I hope you take the time to do some research. I hope you want a conservative judge. I hope you want to look at adding some diversity of thought I don't think we add anything to the Nevada Supreme Court by electing another Clark County District Court judge. We need to stop the groupthink on the Nevada Supreme Court. And again, I'm asking for your vote, Leon Aberstory. Thank you. Thank you, Leon. <clears throat> Next candidate, we're starting now with a county. Jeannie Herman is our current county commissioner for five, right? And mm -hmm. she's running again. Take it away. Yes, I'm running again. I'm your constitutional Jeannie. conservative commissioner. <laughs> and uh, I will keep this short, but uh, I, I've had a, a record of being number one and not a team player. So uh, as usual, most important things that regard, regarding to the people's business, it's it's been a lot of four to one votes and i'm looking for help to make that change thank you i'm asking you for that thank you Janie. next candidate chairman box running for sheriff thank you <clears throat> thanks for coming good morning uh, my name is sherman box and i'm running for washoe county sheriff um, I want to be brief because I'm sure we're all in campaign sickness this morning. Uh, um, the things that I'm talking about and the issues in the jail with mental health and drug and alcohol addiction uh, not only need to be addressed but will be addressed regardless of who is elected sheriff. Um, I am talking about the things that the sheriff actually has control over and actually has the ability to change. And um, if you can check my website, you'll find that I've been talking all along about staffing. I've been talking about regionalizing police service in this valley. And I've been talking about a better communication process for the rurals so that they can actually get the service that they deserve from the sheriff. Um, again, my name is Sherman Box, Box, F-O-R, Sheriff.com, uh, and I would appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you, Sherman. Next candidate for sheriff is Darren Balaam. Darren? Good morning, everybody. Thank you for this opportunity. My name is Darren Balaam. I'm running to be your next Washoe County Sheriff. Like all of you, I live in this community. I'm raising a family. And I want all of our families to be safe. And that's why I'm running to be your next sheriff. Uh, four things that my campaign's focusing on. Mental health in the facility, our detention facility. How do we handle that? Mental health in our region. How do we work with the cities and the county to address that? Domestic violence, cracking down on those offenders. Uh, and we see that devastation throughout our community of domestic violence, what that has. 
seniors, protecting seniors, educating them, and watching over them. And then lastly, community integration, community policing is truly what that is. Working with you, listening to you, and collaborating with the community as we continue to flourish and come out of this recession that we have, addressing those issues that we're going to face now, but more importantly in the future. I have a website. It's Darren at BalemForSheriff.com, and it's F-O-R, not the number four. So please look at all my uh, credentials, and I ask for your support and vote. Thank you very much. Thank you, Darren. <laughs> Next candidate is also Washoe County, our current Washoe County clerk, Nancy Parrott. She's running again. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming, and Ray, thanks for having us and giving us a chance to talk to everybody. I am currently your county clerk. My name is Nancy Parent. I'm serving my first elected term and running for my second elected term. I have been with the office, though, for 18 years. And you may wonder, why is the county clerk elected? The county clerk is the official record keeper and the independent record keeper of all your county government records. Anything that goes before the Board of County Commissioners is retained by the county clerk. No one can tell me what to put in those records. I'm, it's my job to work for you and report the truth and keep all the documents and records of what the commissioners do. I am committed to integrity and the correctness of those records as well as your access to them because they are public records. And th that's one of the popular buzzwords is access to your public records. But you've always had them with your county clerk because that's our job. Um, my website is voteparent.com. If you want to check it out, get more information about my background. It also tells you about all the other things your county clerk does for you. Voteparent.com, Nancy Parent, thanks very much. Thank you, Nancy. Next candidate is our current county assessor, Mike Clark. He's running again. Mike? Good morning. Thank you for having us here. Uh, it's a good opportunity to meet uh, meet the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and uh, the men's club, uh, Reno Men's Club. It's nice to see a joint meeting like this. So again, good morning. My name is Mike Clark, current Washoe County Assessor. Uh, I had a question asked for me this morning for someone I was sitting next to at breakfast. I said, well, what's an assessor? And, and I just wanted to let people know, you know, the easiest way to think about the assessor is the, the county appraisal office. We do appraisals for the county. We, we value real property. We, we value uh, a personal property. We value airplanes, casinos, businesses, pizza ovens, tanning booths, anything of value. We we uh, have the research and we know what those are, are worth. And and uh, what I bring to the table, and one of the reasons why you should consider me as a candidate to, to reelect is, is I'm a conservative person. I don't overvalue property. I'll resist. Uh, any type of pressure from the county to overvalue property. Uh, I'm just uh, looking at a fair, fair, uh, accurate number on, on values and uh, share those with anyone. I'm willing to talk to anybody if they think their property has been overvalued. Come in, we'll talk to you, we'll come out to your, your property, your place of business, and uh, hear your concerns. But fairness, accuracy, that's what I'm looking for. Again, my name is Mike Clark. You can go to my website, Clark for Assessor and uh, see some uh, comments that I've made about SJR 14 and how I think it'll devastate the economy if that uh, somehow or another gets through. Thank you, Mike Clark. Thank you, Mike. And I'm sure he'll talk to you afterwards about the, the proposed second reading of the property tax, which I'm violently against. Next candidate is perpetual candidate, and he's current and Current. good morning, and thank you Current. for having me here today. I'll be happy to introduce myself, Ray. Don <laughs> Cavallo. My name is Don Cavallo. I'm your current Washoe County Public Administrator, and I am running for re-election. I'm here today to ask for your support, your vote, and tell 500 of your closest friends also to vote for these conservative people that have come before you today. Um, I, I'd like to talk to you about a lot of things. One, my experience. 28 years in office. Two, the fact that I've handled over 6,000 probates in that time frame. But what I really need to tell you about is how important it is that you set your estate, your financial affairs in order, have your trust in place, have a will in place at minimum, because all that does is tell the probate court how to handle your affairs. Reason I say this is because the public administrator's office secures the property of an individual who's passed away in Washoe County that has not prepared or does not have family to do so. 
and by the virtue of the lack of their estate planning, my office ends up doing that probate. It's a county administrative office, but it's elected, so it gives me that ability to do what's in the best interest of the estate, the beneficiaries, and move forward. I'm Don Cavallo. I'm asking for your vote. Thank you very much. All kidding aside, I always give Don a bad time, but you've got to reelect him. He's a great, no great, no he's a great public administrator. You vote for him. Next candidate, we're starting with the city. Joe Lawrence is running for Reno Sparks. I'm, I'm Reno City Council Ward Two. Joe. Good morning. Thank you. I'm Joe Lawrence, uh, running for Reno City Council Ward Two. Uh, First of all, a lot of people don't know where Ward 2 is. Ward 2 is all of Damani Ranch, Lake Ridge, and then into the uh, Virginia Lake area. So if you live in those areas, you can vote for me. All right, the numbers are in, in the Republican favor. There's more Republicans in that ward, and all we need to do is go out and knock on doors. I knock on doors every day. Uh, I'm told every day that, there's, that they haven't had, hadn't seen anybody in 7, 8, 10 years. It surprises me. But I enjoy knocking on doors and meeting the voters, and I'm staying, staying to the fundamentals. The reason I'm running for Reno uh, City Council is, and, and if you don't know it, um, there's, they're all liberals, except for one. Um, there's five Democrats, one liberal independent, that's the mayor, she claims to be independent, liberal independent, and then one Republican. Um, after you vote for the state offices and, and county and, and the federal, really, we're living in this city. We're driving these streets every day. We're dealing with the traffic every day. We're... We're dealing with homelessness and panhandlers every day. We're dealing with these locals, local issues. We need someone to get in there and grab a hold of that rope and start pulling it back towards the center, maybe get it across the center. Because I don't know about you, but we're moving towards San Francisco, and I don't like it. I was born here, uh, St. Mary's Hospital. I've already got my burial plot up in Mount View. I'm not going anywhere, okay? I'm here for life, all right? So um, as we drive these streets and we see these issues, um, I like to say that proclamations don't pave potholes. And every week, they're, they're, every council meeting, they're issuing proclamations. Um, and they're doing all this fluffy stuff, and they're not, taking, they're not doing enough of the real stuff. So if you can vote for Ward 2, if you can vote for me, we're going to get back to the fundamentals and take care of the basics. And that's why I'm running, take care of the basics. So I appreciate your support. Please vote for me, Joe Lawrence, Reno City Council, Ward 2. And please, you can visit my uh, uh, website, joelawrence.org, joelawrence.org, and you can see my bio and all my history. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Next candidate is also running for the Reno City Council, Ward 2, Maria Davis. Good morning, everyone. My name is Maria Davis, and I am running for City Council, Ward 2. Uh, Joe, thank you for the description of the area that it covers. Um, and you know, talking about um, the basics, I am an immigrant. I came here, it, I love this country. I love this city. We moved here in 2005 when my husband uh, retired from the Marines after serving for 23 years. I've traveled to other places. I've seen the opportunities that other places have to offer. But I see that this is the place where we want to be. I have my children here. We thought that this was a perfect place to raise my half Mexican, half American children or half um, whatever their dad is, USA citizen. Um, I am a citizen too, in case that you have to ask, because I have been asked that many times. But anyhow, going back to the basics, to be able to work as a community, you have to get to know your community. I don't know if you guys have noticed when you drive around town, when you get stuck in traffic, when you look at all the issues, some of the issues is that are that we are a diverse community and we're not able to recognize that. We have to be able to understand the composition of our community to be able to know how to approach and fix the issues. When you look around you, you see a lot of business owners, professionals that are immigrants. And I am at a point right now where I talked about immigration yesterday almost all day. People still, still questioning whether I am legal, whether I speak English, if I love America, like seriously, are we that ignorant? I think it's time for all of us to come together. If you don't come together, you're never gonna fix anything. I don't care how much money you have, you won't be able to fix anything. So on that note, we need to better our education for our children, which come from all types of cultures. And it's beautiful 
When you bring them all together, it's beautiful. You have to be positive on this. I'm not for illegal immigration. I'm not for criminals. I'm not for that. Most of the people that come here come to work and come for the opportunities that we need to continue to create in our community for our community residents. Anne Maria Davis, I know that you guys find it some, uh, hard sometimes to see a Hispanic woman, Republican, conservative, being in front of this crowd. But my kids can tell you, I have two of them here, Michaela and Michael. I've never been one to take the easy way out, and I'm not one to quit. So please, learn, be informed, know what amnesty is. I know Mark Amadei is not for amnesty. We had about two hours talk on that issue yesterday. Learn what chain immigration is. Learn what immigrants do to this country. You yourselves, pride your, yourselves on saying that, oh, my grandparents came from, I have no idea where, right? From different places. So please, embrace what we have here. Embrace that. We can work together. We, immigrants, your grandparents, your parents, we are all part of why America is a great country. Let's keep it that way. Vote for Maria Davis for City Council Ward 2 on June 12th. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. The next candidate is uh, currently on the Spark City Council Ward 4 and is running again, Charlene Bybee. Good morning. Thank you all for being here this morning and listening to all this political speak. I know it gets exhausting, but we're close. We've got June 12th. Uh, early voting has started. Uh, I have been on the Spark City Council. This is the end of my first term. I have lived 54 out of my 64 years in the city of Sparks. I've raised my two sons there, and I'm invested in my community. I understand my community, and I've seen it grow from the time I was a little girl of about 20,000 population to 96,000 people in the city of Sparks. We are also facing many challenges in this region uh, because of the growth. It's a good challenge, I think, but I think that uh, addressing infrastructure and uh, issues with our rapid growth, affordable housing, um, just there's so many things that are challenges to us, but I welcome those challenges, and I think the city of Sparks does. We are not, it's a nonpartisan office, but I tell everyone that I knock on their doors and I'm out walking, knocking on doors, that I am a Republican. I have two opponents, one Democrat and one Republican, and Sparks did make a change, as Reno did, where we only run in our ward this time. That was a new change. So I only run in ward four, but what Sparks also changed is that in the primary, because there are three candidates, I can win this with 50 50% plus one vote. So if any of you are in Ward 4, which is on Vista Boulevard, uh, from Bering on the right-hand side, so it's um, Satellite Hills, the Vistas, and all through Wingfield, uh, is Ward 4. If you know anyone there or you live there, I'd greatly appreciate your vote. I would like to be done on June 12th. And I will say that the City of Sparks are all Republican and one nonpartisan, and we get business done, and we try to stay out of the paper, and we don't spend money we don't have. So we're doing it right in Sparks. Thank you. I'd appreciate your support. Thank you, Charlene. By the way, all of us that live in Sparks, we have Republicans that run the place, you know? None of this Democrats. Next candidate, Jeff Church, is running for school board, District F, right? At large. Yeah, Go ahead, at large. Good morning, everyone. Yes, District F at large. That's basically everything east of uh, Virginia Street, but I need all your help. Get the word out for Andrew and I. Uh, we need uh, conservatives, fiscal conservatives on the school board. And uh, one quick uh, test. What is the largest budget for local government outside of Clark County? School board, not Reno, not Sparks. It's a billion dollar budget and it pays a whole $800 a month. So that's why I'm in it, obviously. I run a website, renotaxrevolt.com. That's renotaxrevolt.com. I invite you to take a look and I'm also leading the effort against the uh, flood tax that's going to be coming on the ballot. I have three main issues. Student safety is number one. Obviously, that's got to be number one. I'm retired from Reno PD, so that's extremely important to me. Number two, fiscal responsibility. The school board is run amok. I think we all know that. And number three is innovation. We have to think outside the box to somehow get us up from number 50. And I don't mean uh, 50 in a good way. We're bottom over and over and over in the nation. Sometimes, like you say, 51, Washington, D.C. Uh, one study, we actually were 49. Woohoo! Uh, 
Uh, sorry, New Mexico. But uh, yeah, we're at the bottom and we have to do better. My opponent, who you don't see here today or anywhere else, was on the board. So if you're happy with that board, then you probably want to vote for my opponent. If you want fiscal responsibility, I'm the person. Re again, retired from Reno PD, retired U.S. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel, and uh, I've taught at Truckee Meadows Community College, and I teach seminars nationwide on recruiting so that we can recruit the best teachers. And I appreciate your vote and Andrew's uh, support, supporting him, as well as getting the word out to your friends and hosting us maybe in your community where we can come and talk. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Next school board candidate, but in a different district, is Andrew Cadell. Andrew? Yeah. Andrew Caudill, running for Washoe County School Board, District C. District C is the northern part of the county. Golden Valley North, Northern Sun Valley North, Spanish Springs, Gerlach, Wadsworth, all the way to the Oregon border. I currently serve as Director of Academic Services for the Nevada Football Program. When I was appointed in my post, we were ranked 122nd in the country in academic performance. Today, we are ranked 8th. So I have experience in fixing broken education programs because it's every student matters. Every student matters. If they want to go to college, we should be preparing the students for college with a rigorous academic program, AP courses, tough classes to prepare them for college. If they don't want to go to college, we should be offering alternatives, apprenticeship programs to make sure our students are prepared to make an impact on our local economy. We need to work with our local business owners. Anything in Washoe, how can we better our economy through our education system? We are not doing that. Our current school board and my opponent, who is the incumbent in this race, they are so focused on enforcing their social issues onto you. What they think is best. Co-ed bathrooms, it's coming. They force it on us. No questions asked, because they think they know what's best for your kid instead of parents. Data mining is a huge problem. Parents don't know that a lot of these exams that kids are taking in schools, their main intent is to data mine, to collect data from kids to see how they're developing without parental consent or knowledge. That is wrong. Money is spent irresponsibly across the board. These co-ed bathrooms will cost $500,000 per school of your money, and you don't have a choice. We can't afford enough books for our kids. We can't afford the transportation for our kids to and from school. We had to cut back on that. But yet, we have 823 district staff members today that are making six figures. And many of these administrators are getting cars paid for by taxpayers. We can't afford transportation for kids to go to and from school, but we're giving someone making six figures a car paid for by tax dollars. This is wrong. The whole system is messed up. My incumbent just offers more, my opponent, the incumbent, just offers more of the same. Nothing's going to change with her. I offer a new direction for the people, individual rights. We need to stand up for the people of this county because enough's enough with our education system. It is broken, so we need someone to come in and help fix the problem with the help of the people, not enforcing our values onto you. Andrew Caudill, Washoe County School Board, District C. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. thank the silver sponsors for their financial support for the videos as well as our podcasts the first person to support us a silver sponsor was ed and georgette strom then ray and carolyn rocha other sponsors are u.s nuclear energy foundation and gary duarte my wife karen is a real estate broker here in reno nevada tom heck for u.s senate sharon angle for u.s congress Eugene Hoover for Lieutenant Governor, Brett Jones for Lieutenant Governor, Craig Muller for Attorney General, Wes Duncan for Attorney General, Derek Urar for State Treasurer, Gary Smith, Candidate 16 Senate District, Kim Meyer for Sheriff here in Washoe County, Sherman Box for Sheriff again in Washoe County, Andrew Caldwell for Washoe County School Board Trustee, 
Aji Shirazi for mayor of Reno, Eddie Lorton for mayor of Reno, Washoe County Commissioner Jeannie Herman, Dan Schwartz for governor, re-elect Mike Clark, Washoe County Assessor. And finally, without their support, we couldn't do things like this. We have literally had this month 20,000 views, and that's because of our marketing and support of the uh, silver sponsors. And as you can see, um, overall, we've had 124,000 views for the life of it, 736,000 impressions. Impressions is what you see on the side. You'll find these on uh, websites as well as YouTube and Google. Hi, this is Bill, and thank you for watching. Go ahead and if you're not signed in, sign into your Gmail, go right up here and subscribe to RMC TV and go over here, watch a couple more videos, link to our website at republicanmensclub.org. And finally, make sure you go down and leave a comment. The comments really help. See you on the next video.